What's poppin'? Welcome back to my channel. I will be reviewing the Braxton Family Matters. In this episode, Miss E, Tawanda, and Trina meets at a restaurant and Trina is late. She said she had lost direction and Tawanda makes a joke that Trina does not have sense of direction. That's why she's not surprised that she late. I think every sister has that because in the first episode, Tawanda was late. So what was her excuse why she was late? Okay, now it's Trina. I think every sibling has that problem of being late and not being on time. Miss E expresses her emotions about her grandson being arrested, losing his mother, and losing his wife she feel like her grandson is going through a lot of pain he is grieving and he probably don't have time to feel and reflect on what was really going on because a lot of things is happening like a domino effect you know what i'm saying right behind each other the losing the mother then the marriage then the arrest so during the restaurant little kevin actually calls and he tells them why he got arrested he says that the warrant for the arrest because he did not appear in court. Uh, I don't know if this is Luda Kevin's first time getting arrested. And maybe he did not know he had to really appear. But if you do not go to court, yes, they can issue a warrant for your arrest. They give you this paper and you're supposed to appear. And sometimes they don't even see you. It's better to be safe and sorry and appear every time than have a warrant for your arrest. It's better that you go see them and then they come get you. And Tawanda hints at something in her interview. She said that the arrest have to do something with the wife. So I'm assuming maybe after Kevin lost his mother, maybe he was becoming volatile towards the wife or something. And I'm maybe I'm assuming Kevin Jr. was arrested for domestic violence. I don't know. This is what I'm assuming due to the hint that Tawanda was making in the confessions. Because they really not speaking on the case. And Miss Eve give these jokes about these drinks. Saying she definitely want a virgin and not a slut. And that friend's watching for her to say that. I'm like, why is she talking like that? And I say, you wonder why your children are the way they are? Yeah, because they get it from you, ma'am. <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't know. I don't know, child. But once they was done, they got out of there. So we going to Tony Braxton. And let me tell you something. Tony Braxton looks good. Let's give credit when credit is due. Tony Braxton looks good, honey. Okay? I don't know what is she doing, but baby, it's working. Okay, Tony Braxton looked better than I. Okay, let me tell you. Tony sat down with her two managers to discuss the residency in Las Vegas with Cedric the Entertainer. And she wants a protocol in place when she gets sick, what is going to happen? Because she's dealing with lupus. So when she gets fatigued, do they have some steps in place on what need to be done because they cannot push her too hard or she will become more ill i said baby if you cannot work what you do you take a break your job is supposed to accommodate you especially if you have an illness they supposed to work with you knowing that they know this information i don't know how hollywood work but on a nine to five you supposed to bring in that document and they supposed to accommodate you according to that document so if they know tony has an illness and she needs to take a break that's what you do you take a break i don't care what they say if you can't do it you can't do it and that's what her team did and i like her team some people will have teams even though you're sick they will have you still working and working i don't understand why you would push yourself when you're sick when you're sick if you cannot work that is the rest period for you. And I definitely like this team. They're not going to force her to do anything. Because the man said, if anything comes to shove, they will shut it down. They definitely looking out for Tony. Baby, and they were showing her practicing and everything. And she looks so young. It's like she's not even aging. Even though she's sick, it's not showing at all. 
That is a blessing in disguise to be sick and you don't show that you sick. My God. But let me tell you, Tony was tearing up those dance moves up, wasn't she? She's girl, you was doing your thing. So she was on the phone and she talks to Tawanda. And Tawanda tells her that she would be going to the sea to check on Kevin because they haven't heard from him in a while. And they about to go see from him. And they and they gonna report back to everybody what is going on. Because Tony Mar really can't fly out like that due to her illness like that. And she have to take it easy and it's understandable. And she tells her that Trina will continue her therapy. And Tawanda want um Tony to do therapy. But Tony, I think, is against therapy. I don't know. It seems like she's hesitant to do it. Because she don't want to open up about her emotions. Maybe Tony is a person who doesn't open up. And she holds everything in. I don't know. That's what it seems like. I wish Tony the best in her residency. So you have Miss E and Tamar meets up in the park. And they talk about their life. And Tamar explains why she moved in where her mom is. Because she did not want her mother to be alone. Because a lot of people were spreading rumors. Tamar was homeless. I don't know. I think that was her white boyfriend who said that i think that's where the rumor came from that's why she's living with her mom because she did not want her mom to be alone dealing with tracy grief and i think that's understandable when you feel like your mom is alone you want to comfort them make sure they're there and they're okay and i think that's reasonable and tamar talking about she's been through a lot of therapy i think tamar definitely need therapy in my opinion i believe tamar has a mental issue but that's just my opinion based on what i see on tv because she says she's gonna continue to go to counseling because therapy will keep you on track and she needs to be on track and and Miss E talks about she has a girlfriend and a boyfriend. I don't know where all this. I don't know what Miss E is talking about, but this is just weird sayings that she just be throwing in there. And I don't like it. I don't like the the weird sayings Miss E is talking. It sounds crazy and it's just coming out of nowhere. <laughs> Left field. Why is she revealing that she has a boyfriend and a girlfriend? If that is the case, do we need to know that? I don't need to know that and don't care. What you do in your life is your business at the end of the day. But did we need to know that? Probably was a joke. I just think it was a weird joke. I don't know. That's just my opinion. And they talks about Tamar is writing a book and she think it might be therapy for her. And I said good for Tamar. Maybe she revealed some things about why she's the way that she is. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe she revealed some things about her marriage to Vince. Having her baby and then the African man, I don't know, and dating the white man. So they talked about their, they would be doing a cooking show together. And I really like the cooking show segment. They show Miss E and Tamar actually on their cooking show. And I thought it was cute that Miss E messed up. Because she was like, welcome to the Cleo show. <laughs> Tamar is like, no, ma. It is a Cleo TV. I'm sorry. I must be Louis. I don't know this Cleo TV. Is that new or what network that is on? I don't know. I'm not popular, so I don't know what the hell be going on in the world. Where can you watch this Cleo TV? And when she said the Cleo show, why that took me back to the 90s psychic Miss Cleo? Oh, the Miss Cleo. Oh, my God. Why that took me back to the 90s psychic Miss Cleo? When she said, welcome to the Cleo show, OMG, I cannot. And I thought that was freaking hilarious. <laughs> and they were debating who was the better cook. And I think she said, Tony makes good spaghetti. And Tamar was like, nah, she put Chuck in her spaghetti. It's not even ground beer. <laughs> I think all sisters could cook, but... But I think Trina might be the stronger cook, in my opinion, because what I see, she cooks the most. And Tamar was like, she makes a good BLT <laughs> sandwich at night. <laughs> why that had me rolling? I feel like, why it sound like she be rolling up at night, and when she get the munchies, that's what she be making. That's just my opinion. I don't know. I don't know. She probably be rolling up and getting the munchies at night. <laughs> And not a mean BLT sandwich, baby. Okay. And 
Trina comes on in support of her sister and mother. And Trina says she makes good drinks, mixology. So she knows she had to come through and do that. And the mama was making a cake. I don't know what the hell it was. Child, I don't know. And the mama said that she likes her children best when they in the kitchen. Because that's when it's peace. Everybody enjoying the good cooked food. And her children are not fighting. I understand that, mama. But I don't know what cake that was. <laughs> and Trina said. Trina made a joke about the presentation. Tamar and Trina started cracking up and so did the mama. I'm just glad they enjoyed each other and they able to laugh together. That's a good thing. That's what family is. Even though you're going through a lot of trauma, find the good and the bad. Laugh together. See the good even when you can't even see it. Try to find the good if you can't even see it. That cooking session had me freaking rowdy. <laughs> They had me rolling. That was freaking funny. I have not heard of the Clio TV. <laughs> and they don't even tell you where you can watch it. Like, where you could go. I don't know. Maybe you gotta Google it. I don't know. Child. But that cooking segment was cute. Trina comes into the therapy session. And this therapy session was very eye-opening to me. Because I'm not... I feel like that Trina is not dealing with one loss, her sister. But she's still dealing with two losses. Her ex-husband gave that she had known for 16 years. And I feel like she is not over Gabe's death. And she's mentioned that Gabe comes to her and talks to her at night. And she feel like she's being punished by Vaughn. Because Vaughn feel like, why are you still mourning your ex when you have me? And I said, to answer that question, men always say you can love two men at the same time. And I feel like... It's possibility that Trina loved two men at the same time, even though her ex is passed away and is gay. I always felt that Trina was more into Gabe than Gabe was into her. Because Gabe was a hoe. He was all over the place. And I feel like she would have never divorced him if Gabe could have been faithful. I think she would have still been with that man. But I like Vaughn because I feel like Vaughn and Trina is a good couple. And she's asking Trina, how can you deal with cutting out the noise or have them coming to you for you to sleep? So she got to work on that. I said healing is not easy and it is a process. After the therapy session, they packing to go to D.C. Because Vaughn and Trina and Tawanda and her man will be going to D.C. to, to see Kevin to see what is going on. Because they haven't heard from him in a while. At the end of the day, they packing and... Vaughn wants to know how this therapy session. And Trina don't want to talk about it. She don't. And I think Trina have every right not to talk about it. She needs something for herself. Stop thinking your spouse have to share everything for you. Trina talks about Tony that she feel more sad for Tony and what she's going through. And she's going through a lot of illnesses. And at the end of the day, Tony don't have nobody to care for her. That's why she feel like she's alone. And she worries about her sister all the time. Because she don't have somebody like Vaughn and her. Stay a couple. They could take care of each other. And I say if that's the case, that's why you got home health days. If it really comes to that, Tony better get a health home health day to take care of her. Even though Tony is the sickest, she looked the healthiest to me. She don't even look sick at all. Because <laughs> it sure ain't showing, baby. Okay, and to me, I think Trina is still in love with Gabe. That's why she's eating and drinking. Because I feel like Gabe was her heart, even though he did her wrong. But I like Vaughn and Trina, so I hope they work it out. And I hope this couple stay. Tawanda is driving her children. OMG, I cannot. I think her children look just like her. To me, her children, son and daughter, looks just like it, Tawanda. And she picks them up from school, and they mad. She tells them that she's going to D.C. to check on little Kevin, and her children are mad. They want to go. She was like, she making up every excuses in the book for them not to go. She was like, oh, you got school. They were like, so I want to go. <laughs> She was like, you got midterm. The door was like, we took that already. Why Tawanda didn't know her children <laughs> didn't already take the midterm? 
I like on when you a parent, you gotta have daily conversation. What is going on in school? You sure already know they took the midterm already. <laughs> Tamar didn't even say nothing. She's like, "Oh, you did? Well, you still can't go." <laughs> the daughter was the daughter thought it was unfair. I thought that was cute. And then when she gets home. She actually gets a phone call and this little Kevin. And she was like, I'm glad you called because we haven't heard from you. What is going on? And little Kevin said, they took my phone. They took my phone. And I'm like, why did they take his phone? He didn't say they stole the phone. He said they took the phone. So I'm assuming they took his phone for evidence for the case that he's dealing with. They don't mention the charge on here, but I'm assuming it's DV. I could be wrong, but I don't know. And based on the conversation, he needs the aunties to buy him a new phone. And I'm like, I'm so confused. Why can't Kevin buy his own phone even though they took your phone? And I'm like, now my head is rolling. I'm like... Okay, do Kevin work? And who is he living with? And I'm like, is he even close with his father? I'm like, why you want your auntie to buy the phone? Why you don't go to your father and ask him to buy the phone if you don't have money? I'm just saying, these are the questions I'm asking myself while I'm watching this. So, it's not adding up. Something is not adding up. I don't know what it is, but it's not adding up. And I think this case is... More serious than what it is. Tawanda reveals that they let him out on, on his own recontinence. So he will be out while pending trial. I'm looking forward what they're going to do in D.C. And how they're going to interact with little Kevin. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.